Hey everybody, in today's quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at using date picker or calendar controls in your inputs. So we're going to take a look at how to use the native way and then provide a fallback. And we're going to do this very quickly in just a few minutes. So first, let's get started with our template and then we'll create the native solution first. So I'm going to be using structure. I'll go create a base template and we'll call this date. So as you can see here, it's created just a handful of files to get us started. I'll drag that into my editor of choice. And as you can see here, we just have our beginning markup. We're importing jQuery, and that's really it. So let's create the input with HTML5. We can create an input and give it a type of date. We'll give it a name of date and then also a value, and we'll keep that blank for now. So if we were to view that in the browser, you'll find that in some browsers, for example, Firefox doesn't support this, and this current version is three. But if we were to move this over to Chrome or Opera, you'll see that we do get this control, and I can click and go up and choose my date. Very cool. All right, so we have the native solution, but this is no good. An input if we can't rely on it, so we need to provide a fallback with JavaScript. And to do that, we'll take advantage of jQuery UI. So we'll go into demos and documentation, scroll down to date picker, and here's pretty much what you can expect. You also have the option of choosing your different themes. So by default, you get this UI lightness, but you have a handful of them. So let's pick one that looks nice. How about this one right here, Redmond? There we go. All right, so now we need to download this. So I'm gonna choose download, and we wanna custom. We don't wanna download the entire file that supports everything. So we can click here to deselect all components. We must use UI core, and then if we scroll down, we're going to choose the date picker, and that's it. And make sure we choose the theme Redmond. Download. And now if I close this out, you can see that our zip file has been downloaded. If we open it up, you'll see that we have a CSS file. This allows us to see the styling of the calendar, a development bundle, we'll get rid of that, and we'll also get rid of the index, the demo page. So now, let's open up our original project directory, and I'll open up my JS file, and we will transfer this file right here. We already have jQuery referenced via Google. And then I'll change this name to jQuery UI. And then secondly, let's make sure that we drag in the Redmond CSS folder. And there we go, we're all set. So I will delete that. And now we're ready to begin using this. I'll return to our project, get rid of these script tags. And now let's bring in jQuery UI. So script source equals JS slash jQuery UI dot JS. Now this is being done for me automatically, but actually you can get rid of these because it's assumed that it's JavaScript. And then next we need to import that CSS file as well. You can see within the Redmond directory, there's a CSS file. So we'll import that as well. Link, bring that in. And the ref is going to be CSS slash Redmond slash jQuery UI. And we'll expand this 1.8.13. And now that's it, we're all set. So just for convenience, let's give our input an ID, though it's not altogether required. And then we'll come down and within script tags, and again, we can get rid of all of that. We'll go jQuery, get the element with an ID of date, and we're gonna call the date picker method on it. All right, so let's see what that alone does for us. I'm gonna come back, refresh the page, and when I click on it, sure enough, easy as pie, we're bringing in the calendar. Looks really good, right? Select my date. Now let's say we don't want this date format. Maybe we want it to be year, month, day. Okay, maybe the atom format. How can we change that? We can do that by passing in an option. And this option will be called date format. Now if you ever wanna find out all of the different options that are available to you, if you bring this up and we come back down to the date picker, you can go to options and this will show you everything that you can pass in. So we'll say date format. And here we'll say year, month, day. And now instead of using the slashes, when I select something, it uses the dash. So that's, that can be helpful if you need a specific format. Now let's say you want to set a default date. You can do that as well. Default date, uh, maybe plus five. And now if I click on it again, can you see here 29 is set to the default date. It's a little hard to tell, but if I refresh, notice how there's a blue border around that. There you go. So what if you also need to give the person an option? They they can only specify something within, say, the next three days. Okay, to do that, we can use the min date and max date. We'll set a max date, and the latest they can specify will be three days from now. All right, try that here. And now can you notice anything beyond this date is not selectable? 
So we choose that, but if I try to choose any of these other ones, we can't specify it. And then if we go back to Chrome, we have one last issue is Chrome is kind of doing double the work here. We have the built-in, but that doesn't play nicely with uh, our jQuery plugin. So why don't we do a very, very quick test, just as a proof of concept. We're gonna limit our global variables by wrapping all of this within a self-invoking anonymous function. And then let's say, let's create an element and we'll say var elem equals document.createElement. You'd probably have this abstracted away to some method that you would call, but here we'll just keep it like this. And we're gonna create an input element. Next, we're gonna set the type element.set attribute and the type we're going to try to set the type equal to a date. But if the browser tries to do that and the browser doesn't understand what the date type of an input element is, it'll just default right back to a text. So with that in mind, we can check this and we'll say if element.type equals text, then we know the browser defaulted, in which case it doesn't support this new input type. So if that's the case, then in that case, will import this jQuery plugin. Otherwise, we won't do anything at all. So come back, refresh. This browser supports the date input, so I'll choose it. Nothing happens. I can set it like normal, but Firefox does not support the date type. So if I choose it, now I can specify anything I want. All right, so that is the jQuery UI date picker tool. For more tips and tutorials, always visit NetTets.